What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, I wanted to talk you through some of my favorite functions contained inside of the tool Sketch Plus. So Sketch Plus is an extension that adds a whole bunch of functions to SketchUp, things like mirror tools and copy along path, a lot of things like that, and I thought I'd talk through some of my favorites. Uh, this video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is currently on sale as a part of my Black Friday sale. A lot of you know that that's my course where I have all my step-by-step -step instruction as well as our community forum and our live calls where uh, we all get together and you can ask your questions live in addition to you being able to go through the SketchUp training in the course. So through Wednesday of next week, that is going to be 50% off for the monthly membership or there's, a, there's also an annual membership that's going to be even more of a discount than the uh, monthly discount. So if you've been interested in taking your SketchUp training to the next level, you want to learn how to use the program, I'd love to see you in the course at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I will note that Sketch Plus is also currently on a Black Friday sale. You can get 40% off of this add-on by going to the sketchupessentials.com slash sketch plus. So um, with how new this extension is, it's really a great deal to be able to get that for 40% off if you are interested in that. If you see this after the sale is over, this is still a great tool um, that really expands the tool set in SketchUp. So I wanted to talk through some of my favorite functions contained inside of this tool because as you can see, it adds a bunch of different tools inside to sketch up and it can be a little bit overwhelming. So what I wanted to do is just talk through some of my favorites. I will bookmark these down below. So if you do want to jump to a particular tool, you can definitely do that. But uh, one of the tools that I really like, and it's kind of a collection of tools, is there's actually multiple different tools in here that you can use in order for randomization of objects. So for example, let's say I've got a bunch of these trees that I want to add to this terrain that I downloaded from the 3D warehouse. So what I could do is I could come in here and just manually drop these myself um, onto the terrain. But you can see how that would be really kind of frustrating to do. What you can do instead is you can select all of these different trees like this, and then there's a tool in here called Drop Plus. What Drop Plus is going to do is that's going to drop your object down so that it's aligned with whatever's below it. So it's basically going to move these down until they intersect with a piece of terrain. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all of these, and then we're going to click on the button for Drop Plus. And so I'm just going to have all of these selected, and then I'm just going to click on one of them, and it's going to drop them down onto the surface below. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to use the object origin to figure out where that intersection point is down below, like this. And so what it's done is it's basically moved these all to where they're now intersecting with the terrain right here. So you can use this in order to quickly drop things like groups of trees in here. In addition to that, there's also tools in here for randomization. So they will randomly scale or spin these objects um, based on these options. So if I click on random spin, for example, what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to click and it's going to let me set a random rotation of these objects. So you can set this in order to quickly randomly rotate these objects. In addition, there's also an option for random scale. So what random scale is going to allow me to do is that's going to allow me to click in here and it's going to randomize the size of my objects like this. So my trees obviously wouldn't all be the same size in the same direction. Well, this tool is going to allow me to adjust those so that they're actually random inside of my scene. Notice how you can also type in values in here. So to set your minimum and maximum. So if I was to type in 0.5 comma 1.5 and then click, notice how I'm going to get a more pronounced result in here. So you can use this in order to quickly set the randomization of those objects inside of your scenes. And so another tool we've talked a fair amount about, but I just really love using it, is the copy along path tool, the path array tool. And so what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to select a path. So you just click on it. So we're just going to select a path like this one. You're just going to click on it. It's going to ask us to set the start, start point. Well, in this case, we want the start point to be right here. And then it's going to ask us to click on an object. So in this case, we're going to click on this bench right here. Well, notice how now... I can move my mouse in here in order to see the spacing of the objects that are being created. And so what I can do is I can use this in order to place multiple different objects along paths. So another thing to note about this is um, if they come in looking like this, so if your benches are facing the wrong way, you can actually hit the shift key with these selected. And so that shift key is going to allow you to set whether the objects rotate along with the path or not. 
So for these, for example, I don't want them to do that. I don't want them to face along the path. You can see how the red axis is facing that direction. If I hold the shift key, however, or if I tap the shift key, then that's gonna place these without rotation. That's gonna allow me to place like all of these park benches, for example, like this, and notice how they're all facing the same direction. So you can use this in order to quickly place a ton of different objects inside of SketchUp really quickly. So another tool that I really enjoy is the smart array tool. Basically what that tool does is it allows you to select a component like this one and then you can activate the tool right here and you can mouse over another instance of that component and it's actually going to figure out the differences in scale and rotation and location and then allow you to repeat them inside of SketchUp. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to create things like spiral staircases, really anything where you have a translation slash rotation slash scale that repeats like this. So we could type in a value of let's say 36 or something like that and it would repeat this 36 times. So what that does is that gives you a lot of control over creating these repeating objects inside of SketchUp, which is a lot of fun. So another thing that can be kind of frustrating is trying to edit different things inside of SketchUp that are inside of groups. So for example, let's say that I wanted to edit this face right here. Well, notice how these, these walls are nested inside of multiple groups inside of the SketchUp model. So what that means is that means to get to the face, I have to click and click and click and click in order to get in here in order to make any kind of edits or anything like that. So on the other hand though, um, there's a tool inside of Sketch Plus that allows you to just activate or uh, that allows you to select that face. So you can just click on the button for deep select face. You can mouse over this and you can click on any face and it's gonna take you directly to that face and let you edit it. So now I can get in here and really quickly edit this face with no problems whatsoever. So in addition, there's also a tool not only for deep selecting the face, but also for deep painting materials. So notice how right now, for example, if I look at this, I would have to click in here multiple times in order to apply a material to this face, right? So I could come in here now and I could apply. So I could come in here now and apply this just directly to this face once we get inside of the group. There's also a tool in here though that allows you to select a material like this and then activate deep paint face. And what that's gonna do is that's going to allow you to apply a material directly to a face inside of SketchUp, even if it's nested. So notice how now I can come in here and I can quickly add something like a brick to multiple different groups in here without having to double click a whole bunch in order to get to them. So there's a bunch of other tools in here as well. So things like untag all can remove tags from all entities. There's also a button in here to untag faces and edges. So if you do have faces that actually get like a layer or a tag associated with them. So if these were accidentally tagged with like roof or something like that, you could just activate this tool and just use the function right here to untag faces and edges in order to remove those. So for example, I can click in here and notice how it's gonna allow me to quickly remove those tags just by clicking on different objects inside of my scene. So you can get Sketch Plus by following the link on this page. I'll also link to a video where I talk through this in depth. So we talk about all the different tools inside of Sketch Plus in that video. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.